Howdy, I'm John and I'm going to present the 2021 workflow update talk with the long-winded title there and link for it is there. I think a lot about why Galaxy and this uh, interaction on Twitter a few years ago really stuck out to me. Um, Devin elegantly describes why technically savvy people still use Galaxy. Um, it isn't always about themselves, often it is, but it's also to enable others. It allows them to provide tools bench scientists to allow them to do their own analysis. Um, sort of, he, as he says, galaxy scales, my time does not. And I, I really love that concept. I think part of what makes galaxy great is it allows people with all different sorts of skills to support um, research in different ways and empower others, um, bringing specialists together to solve problems. Admins can deploy infrastructure, developers can write tools, bioinformaticians can become plugin developers and write tool wrappers, trainings, workflows, etc., to enable bench scientists. Ah. In this sort of model of Galaxy, I'm going to focus in on this particular interaction, um, the interaction between the method developer and the pipeline executor, and, along, and on the workflows that connect them. Um, so Galaxy is good for method developers because it basically enables whole new classes of people to write workflows and become method developers. Um, they can do experimentation, optimization, documentation, um, all without needing to be comfortable with command lines. For the pipeline executor, likewise, understanding command lines and QSub and cloud infrastructure might be daunting, and you don't need to with Galaxy. Um, and then the outputs of workflows are enhanced by embedded visualizations, etc. But for these people, Galaxy is limited in, in many ways. Um, for the method developer, you know, many of these people are very technically savvy and prefer command line driven tools like SnakeMake. For the pipeline executor, maybe Galaxy exposes too many options, histories, upload options, etc. And workflows aren't really front and center in the UI and, and to have traditionally exposed a lot of extra options that aren't really needed. And so it could be a little daunting. So over the last two years, we've made bold strides to address these shortcomings. Um, for the methods developer, we've sort of incentivized making best practice workflows and made them more powerful. The workflows themselves are more expressive and scalable. And for the pipeline executor, we've really simplified finding and executing these workflows. At the 2019 conference, Marius and I presented simple workflow parameters to help parameterize workflows in a structured way that is geared towards reuse and rich annotation. These have come a long way in the last two years, and they're now, there are now a wide variety of types. They can be optional. Um, have default values, text parameters can be restricted by connected values or values supplied by the workflow author. Regular data inputs can be extended, have been extended to likewise allow them to be optional or specify data types explicitly. This all makes workflows a lot more expressive and robust. Another way we've incentivized best practices is by allowing annotation of important metadata on tools and workflows. Galaxy now exposes license and author information to encourage giving credit to the plugin authors. Um, this is exposed in the Galaxy DOM for tools and workflows as microdata and schema.org semantic uh, data objects, metadata objects. Author information can link to many different kinds of resources, but special support for ORCID is provided, a, a sort of long requested feature. Licensed metadata is derived from SPDX, and workflow authors can edit all of this right from inside the workflow editor. In the last two years, the expressiveness, documentation, and tooling and debugging and reporting op output for workflow tests have all dramatically improved. Check out the Planemo docs for more information. Um, switching hats quickly, we, we have a Galaxy Works customer that needed uh, workflow testing last year, um, set up on a bunch of different uh, workflows um, that were all sort of um, existing and diverse. Um, these were older style workflows and they didn't leverage input parameters, output labels, etc. things that are required for workflow testing. Also, they want to keep the workflows in Galaxy rather than leveraging GitHub and, and sort of typical Planemo paradigms. Um, so to address these use cases, uh, we made developing, uh, we made the workflow best practice panel uh, to rapidly transform workflows into best practice workflows. Uh, Let's show a little video here from Helena about this, but um, we've, we've added this best practice panel. It's an opportunity to encourage the um, annotation of author and license declarations. Um, here we're sort of um, the, you know, encouraging, you know, it was missing an annotation, it was missing creator details. Um, they're specified here. The uh, best practice panel also um, 
encourages the use of um, typed and annotated inputs, as we've been talking about, and it allows migration from older style parameters to these modern ones. Uh, here we're seeing that the creator can be a people or organizations, have all sorts of metadata associated with it. Um, best practice panel also encourages the use of output labels. Um, yeah. Um, and these properly inputted, properly annotated inputs and outputs are needed for workflow tests. They vastly improve planning with tooling around running workflows, linting, etc. Part of the workflow testing um, was to enable a cluster migration for this customer also. So we developed uh, tooling for testing and validating all the tools tool tests in a workflow. So to give the green light on running the individual tool units before the workflow integration. Um, it's freely available on GitHub and PyPy. Um, traditionally, the workflow editor is just replaced the entire state of the workflow with each update. No information on what changed was tracked. We tracked the versions, but not how versions changed is another way to think about it. Um, to power this best practices panel, we implemented a whole new API um, backed by a fully typed and structured pedantic descriptions of atomic changes to workflows that are persistent with each save. This infrastructure sets the stage for many cool things beyond just the best practice panel. Uh, for instance, the new refactoring API uh, powers the ability to upgrade sub workflow steps with the click of the button from the parent workflow, as is shown here. This, along with the ability to navigate into sub workflows from the parent, makes sub workflows a lot more usable than they were even just a year ago. The refactoring API also powers uh, really cool features being developed in Galaxy and Palima by Simon Bray um, for auto upgrading workflows to the latest um, tool and sub workflow versions. This mirrors work being done to keep tool wrappers up to date and Bioconda recipes updated as the underlying tools are updated. So these are all things we are doing to sort of enhance, incentivize uh, the methods developers. Now we'll jump up to the workflows. Uh, where we've improved reporting and scaling. Um, when we debate debut data set collections, the point was to scale workflows and collections could allow processing of a few dozen elements at a time. Uh, by the 2016 GCC, we were seeing sort of presentations talking about hundreds of items being uh, processed at a time. And by the 2017 GCC, with a bunch of optimizations, uh, dealing with 3,000 items was possible. Um, by the 2019 GCC, we presented um, that another order of magnitude was possible. And in June of 2021, the current known record in production is a workflow mapping over 190,000 data sets. Um, yeah. In my previous position, um, one of the last things I did was help set up a clinical Galaxy application. Um, you know, um, where, we, where we really had these different um, stakeholders and, and we sort of we operated we, we sort of allowed the method developer to create a workflow um, the pipeline executor would be in the lab would execute it and then hand off the results to the clinician all from within the galaxy um, UI we had to develop a lot of um, specialized training and um, you know custom documentation etc to sort of give the clinician some sort of context because um, Galaxy wasn't providing a lot of support here. Um, I think part of the problem with that was that histories suffer from this lack of context. I think I used this slide before. Um, you know, we, we do all these things to provide context um, for the, the big list of things in the history. You know, tool form enhancements, tags, collections, um, etc. But ultimately, even after the huge history we write, you know, Galaxy's histories are still just a big list of a big flat list of things that grows very quickly. Um, now imagine this isn't even a history that you created. You didn't even run the black box. Um, the output of a workflow is just a bunch of data sets, and then you know there's not a lot of context there. So sort of to address this, uh, we've we've we we we've added the concept of an invocation report. Um, it ties together the outputs of a workflow. We presented this briefly at the 2019 GCC as like a beta thing that we were we were adding. Um, so we, we, we I, you probably have seen these slides before. Um, 
We had a nice markdown editor. We had syntax for embedding Galaxy objects in the markdown. Um, but over the last two years, we've taken this, this beta thing and we've really invested a lot in it. And it's a lot better than it, than it was before. One of the first things we did is we took that mark, those markdown based uh, reports and we allowed them to be used within Galaxy as another new backend for pages that are a lot more robust and sort of a lot more intuitive. Um, and then you could, all, we extended that to allow you to publish an invocation report as a standalone page, sort of decoupling it from the workflow. We allowed a PDF export of reports. So we could sort of make that handoff we've been describing there uh, very explicit. Um, Sam went in and, and took this very, these very rough concepts, these very rough UIs and, and polished them uh, to make a really very nice final product. Um, the, the reports look better than ever. Um, he started with the components of the report itself, but then also uh, polished the editor. Um, you used to have to understand the syntax, and now you've got all these options on the side that each have their own UI for selecting things. Um, so this complicated, uh, these complicated directives for embedding Galaxy objects into the markdown are, are easier than ever. Um, Oleg has contributed a bunch of nice components for dealing with composite data types, data types, digging digging into them, um, pulling images out, etc. Um, Sam took the uh, took took all the visualizations in Galaxy and made them embeddable into the report. Um, we'll see some of these new components here. Um, again, thanks to Helena for these videos. Um, um, here she is uh, marking uh, marking up some uh, specifying some output labels so that we can work with them in the reports, um, and we're, we're we're at sort of editing the re the report mark down here for a workflow. You can see we can specify the outputs. We can see the outputs. We can um, where we're showing previews, the history data set peaks of those outputs here. Um, we're going to see um, job metrics and job parameters the same way. So this, yeah, all of these enhancements have come over the last couple of years. Um, it's, it's really exciting to see this uh, component grow. All right. And uh, now we're going to show visualizations off. So on the side panel where we have all the different components, we now have all the different visualizations as well. Um, you can select the output that needs to be visualized and you've got that same visualization charts form um, available right there. So then when the workflow runs, um, you can uh, you can see, a, you can visualize the outputs uh, interactively. So that's things that we've done for the workflow. Um, Finally, we'll sort of wrap up talking about the pipeline executor and how we've made finding and executing workflows easier. We talked about this, this lack of context problem. Um, one thing that we've done to help improve it is invocation tracking. Um, you know, before you couldn't see a running workflow and now you've got a representation for it in the UI. Um, you, you know, the admins and, and, and individual users can see all their running invocations can dig into it. Uh, we started by just adding the the form for seeing the workflow itself and, and, and having the output of the workflow, but also um, extended it to um, also have a drill down of it. So here we've got the workflow form. Um, when we're running it, um, we can we can see the, the description of the workflow and now we can dig into the inputs, the outputs, the parameters and the steps. The steps to include additional details like step inputs and outputs, job details, um, data sets can be open and visualized right from the invocation. Um, all of this is utilizing components from Mason's history, right? Um, and as you can see now, we've got a lot more context for the running workflow than we ever had before. And that makes the workflows a lot more um, exciting. Um, the 2019, uh, at the end of 2019, we got together, um, a, a group of us, and, and, and talked about how we could simplify the whole user inter interface around running the workflow. Um, as part of an, an effort to sort of take some of the great features of Galaxio um, that, that's sort of powered by the Galaxy API, but move them into Galaxy Core. Um, and we, we came up with a nice document that outlined 
things we wanted to see in the Galaxy interface. Uh, we wanted to simplify that, that workflow run form, hide unnecessary details, hide workflow steps, um, allow upload right from the, the workflow form, and then figure out a way to take workflows and put them right in front of the user um, when they land on, on, on Galaxy's homepage. Um, the, one of these things that we did accomplish is that simplified workflow form. Um, as you can see on the left, this is um, the the older workflow form that has every step listed. Um, and, and the left looks a lot more, and the right is the new simplified form. If you've got a best practice workflow, it will automatically just show you the simplified form. Um, it's a lot cleaner, um, and, it, and, it, and it will load and run a lot faster, and it uses the API in a better way because it's only sending the inputs in. Um, so uh, it's more structured, um, yeah. As part of this, we migrated that run form to Vue.js. Um, I mentioned the, you know, without having to load all the steps, the whole thing performs better, um, faster to render, faster to, to, to submit. Um, we implemented uploading right from the form. So we, we took the, the upload component, we rewrote it in Vue, um, and then we, uh, we, we allowed it to be launched right from that tool form and yeah, this would, in, in theory, let you, you know, hide the concept of data, hide the concepts of tools and, and, and the history from people who just want to run um, the, uh, run the, run workflows. Uh, a nice thing about uploading right from the form itself is that you can sort of tailor that upload to, that upload component to the data types that are expected um, for that workflow input, right? So we can restrict the dropdown of possible data types. We don't need to display the composite data type tab if it's not applicable for that input. We don't need to display all the collection creation stuff if it's not valid for that for that component, um, for that, that particular input to the workflow. Um, so we've enabled running workflows in a much more simplified form. Um, and now we need to work on the landing, that, that sort of initial um, introduction to Galaxy experience for those executors. And this is a work in progress. Um, but we, we've got we've got some some work to do, and we've got it tracked down, and and, and um, hopefully we'll get that done soon. In terms of finding uh, workflows, um, we've sort of added integration with uh, GA4 or GH um, tool registry servers, so Doc Store and Workflow Hub. Um, Marius is going to talk a lot about that in his IWC talk. Check that out for more information. And I uh, just want to say thanks to the whole Galaxy community for building awesome workflows and building awesome workflow integrations. Thanks so much.